So today I'm going to be talking about uh, practical quantum computing with the D-Wave system. Um, I know there's been two other talks uh, earlier this week uh, on programming with the D-Wave system that sort of that served as an introduction to different types of problem classes that you can solve. So I'm going to be assuming that uh, folks here have already seen those talks, and we're going to be kind of starting at an advanced level and jumping into uh, talking about hybrid. So I will, though, start with a uh, quick introduction and a quick overview for anybody who missed those talks or wants a fast refresher. Uh, so before I get started, though, I want to uh, mention that pretty much everything I'm going to be talking about uh, today is in open source. Um, documentation is available both online uh, and in Leap. Um, and we really, really want feedback. Um, we want uh, folks to contribute to our community. We want issues. We want pull requests. We love bug reports. Um, anything uh, that you know will make your life easier or, or uh, to, to help you solve the problems that you want to solve. If you just have an idea and you're interested in how to go about solving it, feel free to post in our community. Um, we're really interested in getting uh, engagement from the community and we're really, and your uh, feedback helps us prioritize. So Let's jump through a relatively fast refresher of uh, what it means to solve problems with the D-Wave system and how we think about solving problems with the D-Wave system. So I like to start off with a relatively simple example, um, which is that let's say I have a network of pipes. Um, what I want to do is I want to find a minimum set of junctions from which we can monitor every pipe segment uh, in the network. So this is a very classic problem. This is called a min vertex cover problem, uh, if any of you are familiar with sort of the graph theory. But this is the type of problem that we would like to solve uh, on the D-Wave system. And we solve it by representing this problem using something called a binary quadratic model, which is what this, uh, this equation represents. So I want to spend a sort of moment or two talking about why we care about this equation and you know, how we use this equation to solve problems on the D-Wave system. So the idea here is that we have a, I hope folks can see my mouse, um, we have a uh, energy that is given by this equation. The energy is determined by binary variables V. Um, so by binary, I mean that in the general sense. It can be either negative one plus one, so these are called spin. So if you have a physics background, this might be familiar to you. Uh, or binary in sort of the more computer science sense, which is to say zero, one. Um, we, the programmer, provide uh, these A's, B's, and C's. These are the uh, coefficients, the weights, the biases. We tend to call them linear and quadratic biases here. Uh, and then the quantum computer, in some sense, tries to minimize this equation. So it will try to find an assigning value to this uh, that minimizes this equation. There's a couple important restrictions here that are worth highlighting. So number one, um, we have pairs of variables here, and we have single variables, but we don't have any sort of triplets, say. So I can say something about the uh, relationship between two variables in my problem, and I can say something about the individual variables in my problem, but I don't really have an ability without using some nice mathematical tricks to say anything about, say, three-way relationships. So if we bring that back to our pipe problem, um, we can see that 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 pipe problem is exactly uh, one of the things that will fit into that equation. So uh, remember, the point was I have a network of pipes, um, and I want to find a set of junctions, so the nodes, uh, that can monitor every pipe, so every edge. So what that means is I have a set of binary variables. Each junction either has a sensor or no. I have pairwise interactions, which is that each edge needs a sensor. And I have a linear optimization over those, uh, over those pipes, which is I want to do as few as possible. And so the whole name of the game is to figure out an A, B, and C such that uh, we can represent this problem. So giving you an idea of what this problem looks like to solve with the Ocean tools. So Ocean is our open source software stack that uh, it's written in Python, although it has a lot of C and C++ in the back end for performance um, to solve problems on the system. This is what solving that problem I just showed looks like. So some of you may be familiar if you've worked with Python with the Network X package. This is an open source package. We don't you know, own it, maintain it, or, or anything like that. We just extend it. Um, 
that is used to represent graphs. So here, uh, in sort of the, the second to bottom chunk of code, we load up that pipe. So uh, here, you, here you can see us adding the different pipe nodes here. Um, we then get access to a D-Wave system, which is what is done here with this sampler uh, line. So here we are making a connection with a remote D-Wave system available in the cloud. Uh, this embedding composite is what translates our problem into something that the D-Wave system can understand. And then we simply hand our uh, graph and the sampler to a min vertex cover function in the D-Wave network X. And this will return a minimum cover, uh, hopefully, of, the, of, the, uh, of that pipeline network. So with that very, very fast, um, overview and reminder of how we think about solving problems on the D-Wave system over, I want to sort of transition to talking about hybrid algorithm development. So at D-Wave and, and really in, in all of our, uh, in all of quantum computing, um, right now the systems are relatively small. Um, they're relatively limited in, in what they can solve and customer problems tend to be uh, very, very large and very sophisticated. So to just sort of put numbers on that, our current uh, 2000 cube processor um, is well named because we have about 2000 qubits uh, in the processor and we have about 6000 couplers uh, amongst those qubits. And so that's quite a bit, but it's not nearly as large as a lot of customer problems, which might have tens of thousands of variables and all of those variables might interact with all of the other variables, which, you know, leads to uh, millions and, you know, millions and millions of different biases. So what we need to do in order to do that is to you know, use hybrid techniques, which I'm going to very broadly define as uh, hybrid computing is using both classical and quantum resources to solve your uh, customer or your uh, application problem. So the first and easiest way to get involved with hybrid is to make use of our uh, hybrid solver that's available in the cloud right now for free. Um, you get up to 10 minutes of hybrid solver time if you sign up uh, for a Leap Cloud uh, account. And you know, when you make your account, you'll immediately get access to our hybrid solver and our uh, quantum processor more directly, which you can sort of see here at the bottom. Um, and I'm actually gonna do a very quick demo now um, showing what that looks like. So if you have signed up for Leap, um, you would arrive here at the dashboard. So I've gone ahead and skipped the sign up step just because 18 minutes isn't a super long time. Um, and you can see right away the screen that I just showed before, where I can see uh, information about my plan. Um, I've used a personal email account here, so I have a developer plan just like you would have. I can see what processors I have available. Uh, you can see I have access to our hybrid solver as well as our uh, 2000Q. You can see how much of my time that I've used. I've used a little bit, uh, and some of the problems I've submitted before, get access to your token, all that fun stuff uh, to make use of a hybrid system. But where this gets really fun and gets really interesting um, is if I go to our collection of examples. So here you can see a wide variety of uh, examples, including the pipelines example I just ran through, although we won't be doing that one right now. Um, and you can get a sense of the different things that uh, one can use the system for. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the knapsack problem. And I'm going to go ahead and load that directly into our uh, online IDE, which is going to take just a moment to load, especially because oh, there we go. Um, and when, what's happening here is that this is spinning up a new environment for me. Um, it's going to be giving me a full featured Python IDE uh, with this example preloaded into it and that already has my uh, authentication work done and everything is configured so that I can access the quantum computer. So if I go ahead and navigate here, I can see here's the little Python program. Um, this is gonna be solving a knapsack problem, which is very similar to the, uh, which is another sort of these uh, classical computer, classic computer science problems, much like the minimum vertex cover. Um, you can see it's sort of laid out in a similar way where I'm gonna construct the problem um, here, I'm going to uh, get access to the quantum computer with this, or with the hybrid sampler rather, with this leap hybrid sampler call. Um, and I'm gonna then parse the solution. So I can go ahead and open up the terminal. I can see uh, this is a, you know, all the files that I have access to. This is a full-fledged IDE. Um, and I can run uh, this problem. So right now what's happening is it's you know, re-ingesting the data 
It's building the uh, binary quadratic model that one uses to solve the system. Oh, there we go. We found the solution. Um, it's submitting the problem to a REST API that's available in the cloud using my uh, token and authentication. It's taking that problem and it's solving it with a combination of um, CPU and GPU and quantum processing unit QPU resources to finally return the solution to me. I could also uh, direct this problem more directly to the quantum computer. Uh, and then in that case, it would be making use of just the quantum processing unit. And I can compare and see how the different things, uh, how they both work and how they can go about solving my problem. So jumping back to the slide deck, um, this is just sort of a summary of, of what I just did. So this is the world's shortest version. Uh, well, I could probably make it shorter if we were playing code golf or something. Um, but nonetheless, this is a very short example of how one would submit a problem uh, to the uh, to the hybrid solver. So as you can see, I'm simply getting access to the hybrid solver here. I'm generating a, a large graph. In this case, one has 5,000 variables. Um, and, quite a, and this is the probability that between any two variables, there is an edge. Um, and I'm solving a maximum cut problem on that, uh, on that graph. Um, so our hybrid solver uh, will solve problems with up to 10,000 variables fully connected. Um, and it makes sure it handles all of the sort of um, mapping and the low level details because running a problem on the actual quantum computer you know might require some knowledge of uh of physics and and you know there's a lot of tuning to be done uh it, it's very much like running writing sort of machine code directly because you're you're accessing this very low level um piece of uh, hardware whereas accessing the hybrid solver is a much higher level of abstraction um but uh for those of you who are interested in those details and do want to look inside the black box and want to understand um, hybrid and, and how we make use of the system and you, know, you want to tune the system or maybe ingest uh, some of your problem data deep into the sort of solving aspects of the system, we have our D-Wave Hybrid uh, open source uh, package. Um, so D-Wave Hybrid is a hybrid asynchronous decomposition sampler framework, which is a long way of saying um, it takes uh, different pieces of algorithms and allows you to combine them together in a very sort of scratch-like um, way, although it, we don't have sort of a drag and drop thing for that yet. Uh, but you can nonetheless combine your problems and, and build them using uh, small blocks of algorithms and then simply run your algorithm once you've completed. So to give you an idea of what the different types of hybrid and the different things you might want to do with hybrid because maybe right now you have one thing in your head or a couple things in your head but really there's a lot of different types of hybrid i'm just going to run through a couple of them um, and i'll even show you the sort of d-wave hybrid code that would generate the algorithm to do that thing uh, so i'll skip this slide just because we're running a little bit short on time so the first and most uh the most used and most commonly thought of form of hybrid computing is something that we call decomposition, which is to say uh, I have a problem that is too large uh, for the quantum computer and I would like to break it into chunks, solve those chunks on the quantum computer, and then uh, reincorporate that chunk into my overall problem. So this block down here in the bottom right is actually D-Wave hybrid code that would do this, uh, would create a sampler that does this uh, task. So we take uh, our energy impact decomposer, which is to say it grabs variables that have a high impact on the overall problem. It submits that to our QPU, and then it reincorporates that solution using the splat composer back into the uh, solution. Another thing you might want to do with hybrid is something called pre-processing. So this is the idea of using a classical uh, algorithm to solve or partially solve um, or to otherwise transform the problem before submitting it to the quantum computer. So specifically, there's an algorithm called roof duality, uh, which isn't that important in this context, but it will determine some of the variable assignments um, uniquely uh, in polynomial time, which is a great thing to do before you submit to the quantum computer. So again, uh, to use, the, use this with D-Wave Hybrid, um, you would use the roof duality decomposer, which takes part of the problem submits it to the quantum computer, and then, re and then recomposes it into the uh, sample space. Uh, conversely, before, uh, other than pre-processing, there's also post-processing, which is where we use the QPU to seed a classical algorithm. Um, and often, this can provide really good value, because the QPU is pretty good at finding pretty good solutions pretty fast. 
um, whereas a lot of algorithms are uh, very good at finding very good solution very slow. Um, and in which case, you know, you could use the QPU as a seed. You could find some good uh, solutions to start with before handing it off to a classical resource. For instance, uh, Taboo is an algorithm that one can use to solve these problems. And you could use the QPU sampler to seed a Taboo algorithm. And then finally, and most interestingly, uh, what, there's a broader category of hybrid, which I'm going to describe as meta algorithms. So in the other ones, I've been basically starting with a, a binary quadratic model, the, the problem that the QPU solves. And I've been using the QPU um, you know, as a post-processor, a pre-processor, or something else. But overall, the, the, algorithm, <clears throat> the algorithm is using both classical and quantum to solve the same type of problem, the same you know, they're working together on that one specific problem. Meta-algorithms take a different approach, which is that I want to solve a different problem, something else that, you know, comes up in, that I can use a classical computer for normally. So for instance, we have a demo called QBoost, which is building a strong classifier out of a collection of weak classifiers. But it's using the quantum computer to accelerate one particular portion of that algorithm. So in this case, uh, the we are using the quantum computer to pick our set of weak classifiers uh, to build our strong classifier, but taking into account uh, the sort of pairwise redundancy of those classifiers. So we're not just taking the best class, the best weak, weak classifiers, we're taking the best, um, removing any sort of redundancy between them. And this was an algorithm that was co-developed with Google to train image classifiers in cars. But this sort of, this meta algorithm space is where most of the really interesting stuff in hybrid is happening right now. Um, and then finally, finally, I will just mention, uh, this isn't really a hybrid algorithm. This is more of a trick um, that we use to, to help you solve your problems because D-Wave is really you know, focused on the practical quantum computing. We really want to solve problems um, for the customer and, and we want to be quite mercenary about whether you know, it's classical or quantum or, or all of that stuff. Um, so this is what we call racing, which is whereby um, because the quantum computer is a remote resource, this also applies to the hybrid solver, um, one can submit their problem to the quantum computer, uh, and then while, the, uh, while they're waiting for that answer to come back over the internet, they can uh, use a local sampler on the, just on their system using their local CPU or GPU uh, to, to continue working on that problem, and you know, we can see which one gets a better solution. So in this case, um, you can see the problem is being submitted to both, and then when the QPU solution returns, we interrupt the taboo, the taboo solver and take the best solution between the two. This is also a really sort of good way, this is a good way to do, you know, a very simple sort of benchmark uh, on quantum computing. 